Okay, uh, it's now time for some more viewer comments and viewer questions. I know there's a lot of things going on right now in the world, but this is where you can just blank that stuff out and start learning about your body and how to live longer and live healthier. It's not all about it. It's not all about lifespan. It's also about health span. So let's get into it. Okay, let's go on. Uh, let's see. Here's one from uh, oh Brandon Bon, uh, Bon rather, in Switzerland, which is kind of cool. Uh, I have lots of people writing from all over the world. Um, love when you talk about the science of dry fasting. I've been doing it bi-weekly dry fast with the addition of olive oil and or butter. No water helps me function in the real world while dry fasting. I call it deuterium depletion fasting. Thoughts? Well, you know, Brad, you know, and Brad Bonner, it's not really fasting if you're eating anything. You got to cut that off, okay? But as far as eating butter and olive oil, yeah, butter especially for the retinol, for the copper content, and for your eyes and your organs and for, for, your, for your iron balance. I'll be talking about something that Morley Robinson and Dr. Joe McCullough have been talking about. They're going to write a book about this stuff how our copper deficiency and our lack of getting rid of iron is causing a lot of the inflation of aging. I'll get into that later. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. as far as deuterium depletion fasting, deuterium is an interesting aspect of pre-fatty acids. You can have a hydrogen on the carbon, or you can have deuterium on the carbon, depending on where it came from. And uh, deuterium is two protons, hydrogen is one proton. Two protons messes up that rotary device uh, protein complex in the mitochondrial matrix to make ATP, and it can slow it down because it's heavier. Instead of going fast, it slows down, makes less ATP. So yeah, you can, uh, you can eat butter, which is saturated fatty acid, and if it's been fed, grass-fed, grass-finished, you're like, likely to get less deuterium in those free fatty acids. Uh, I know you know this already, but be very careful, even with olive oil. Many uh, lab evaluations of, of commercially available olive oil have found almost 100% adulterated soy oils. Yeah, soy oil, you know, canola, um, all kinds of bad oils. I have to tell you, the, the olive oil business is a mafia. And it, it loads up all these bad oils to sell as olive oil. And it, it really is horrible for you. I think Joe's going to put out a new book on linoleic acid and these seed oils and vegetable oils, how bad they are for your um, for your body because they just they interrupt the mitochondrial matrix and they cause proton leakage of the mitochondria, which is not good. Um, but yeah, it's funny because what I eat is a, or take from time to time, is a Tunisian olive oil because I was able to buy some of Dr. Stephen Gundry's olive oil, which is great olive oil, it's very expensive, but it has a specific taste. You can really taste the real polyphenols in the right kind of olive oil grown in very dry or semi-arid areas that cause stress on the plants to create these stress polyphenols. And it tastes different. It's kind of a, a, a hard taste, but you'll know the taste when you try it. Uh, you can try any virgin olive oil and try a Tunisian olive oil and you'll taste the difference because the Tunisian olive oils, some of the Sicilian, but definitely the Tunisian and the Moroccan olive oils will have a very distinct taste. And that's the polyphenol you're looking for. So yeah, that's absolutely right. You've got to be very careful of your olive oils. Um, hello, I was wondering how different a dry fast is if you're already in keto when you start a dry fast. Uh, do you plan to do one? Okay, okay, I understand that. The idea here is if you're in keto, you think you're able to be two days into a dry fast and you're ready to go to a dry fast, you cut two days out of it. It's not true. Keto is when you're eating a lot of protein and you're not eating sugars, so you think you've don't have the sugar, so you can go right into the dry fast. But when you think about it, your body's designed to, glu to do gluconeogenesis, which is taking proteins, which you're eating in a keto diet, and make sugar out of them. So you're still making sugar, and you're not really in deep ketosis compared to a dry fast. Personally, I feel that going into a dry fast with pre-electrolyte loading before, and by the way, I'm about to start my next one. I only had a five day I'd interrupt it because of a family issue. I'm going to go back into a dry fast, film it every day. It'll be very fun. And uh, I'll report every day while I, as I go through it to explain what I'm experiencing and how it goes. But the idea here is to let your body go naturally into a dry fast. Burn out your glycogen over two days because you're not eating or drinking anything. And then go into ketosis 
and turn off your PKA, turn on your stem cells, and all the cool stuff that happens when you do that. Uh, and just go through it naturally. The Russian doctors defined this. Shishenikov and Filinov, they knew what they were doing. They've done it for 80, 50 to 80 years. They're really excellent at healing huge metabolic problems and, and physical problems. They have fourth stage C word cures by putting people on 11 day dry fast. I don't call for that. I don't think you need that unless you have a major medical issue, and then you should have the, uh, your dry fast monitored by a doctor so that you can monitor your, your vitals while you go through it. Seven day is fine, almost everybody can do a seven day. Five to seven day, you get most, if not all the benefits of these longer dry fasts, and if you don't have a medical condition, don't bother with an 11 day. I've done them, my partner's done them. Yeah, you can do them. Man, you look skinny at the end of the thing. Anyway, uh, yeah, so, It'd be very educational if I, if I decided to do this. Uh, no, I have no plans on doing that. You don't need to do it. Just pre-electrolyte load before you go to a dry fast, like I talk about in the Phoenix Protocol, because you want to get these critical electrolytes, potassium, magnesium, calcium, sodium. You need these things to operate your body systems, your cellular systems to help your cells expel uh, toxins and operate correctly while you're during the dry fast. Don't go into a dry fast without preparing yourself with electrolyte loading. Okay, next question. Uh, great video, thanks. Uh, are there better cuts of beef uh, for more stearic acid than others? Okay, I'm, there, this guy's talking about my Neogenesis book, where carnivore diet is a preferred diet. That's what I eat now. I almost exclusively eat, eat meat. I eat some eggs, maybe a little bacon every now and then, and maybe a little teeny weeny bit of cheese, because the stearic acid is in the fat, so Certain fatty cuts or have more stearic acid than others. So your porterhouses, your ribeyes, that kind of stuff. Um, I eat roast beef meat chunked up. Um, I like I like filet mignon, of course. The stearic acid is in the meat fat. Uh, I was talking about the problem with using unsaturated fats and its incorporation into the mitochondrial matrix, matrix and the comment Got me laughing. I hate proton like each in the morning. Yeah, I know, me too. <laughs> okay, a little, little background on this. When you take specific types of saturated fats or unsaturated, unsaturated fats into your body, it get incorporated in the mitochondrial matrix. So these lipid layers are all built up from the fatty acids you eat. Free fatty, uh, unsaturated and saturated fatty acids are different. Unsaturated fatty acids have holes in the, in the chain. They create lipids with bent and twisted tails on them. Um, the stearic acids, the saturated fat acid, palmitic acid, they don't. So they have a nice tight cell structure at the lipid layer, not broken up because you don't want it broken up because what happens is in the inner outer matrix of the mitochondria, you have to have a, an exchange of protons in and out of the, the inner and outer layer to drive the, the rotary electron transfer chain to make ATP. Okay, I think we'll call it quits for today, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, send this to your friends, and I will see you later.